Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel. My name's Chris and today we're looking at a fast imaging Newtonian that was sent to me by First Light Optics and I'm just going to open it up and give my first impressions of it. Now with that in mind, I do work on the help desk at First Light Optics. So anything I do say, please bear it in mind of that context that I do work for First Light Optics. But even so, I'm sure you'll be interested if I just run over a few things that we can all see with our own eyes regarding this telescope. Wow. <laughs> One of my colleagues in the warehouse is definitely having a lot. Right, yeah, Michael. Thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate the extra stickers. As well as the telescope, I'm also is popped in the photo visual coma corrector by Stella Lyra as well. Now this is optimized for F4 telescopes, but will work between F3 and F6. It's photo visual, so it's modular, and it's got a magnification factor of 1.1 which means when you use it with an f4 newtonian it's actually going to turn it into an f4.4 so yeah there is that uh, i'll have a look at that in a minute though we'll get to the main course first and we'll look at the dessert after now in the box you get a 35 mil extension tube and that's to enable you to reach focus with eyepieces because imaging Newtonians have the focuser set up to reach focus with a camera and the focus point for a lot of cameras is different to what eyepieces are so let's have a look at this and see what the quality is like so immediately I can see it's got a brass compression ring on it so it's not going to mark any of your eyepieces that you use in there it's a two inch nicely labelled it says Stella Lyra 35mm extension tube made in Taiwan so yeah just to back up it's GSO it's threaded for two inch filters and it appears to be nicely machined now one of the things that immediately strikes you is that the focus is quite a long way down the tube so what I think's happened is they've used the the tube for the F5 version of this Newtonian and they've moved the focuser down to down the tube to allow for the steeper curved mirror which will actually mean that there's quite a, a natural dew shield going on before you reach the secondary mirror so it might not be actually necessary to have a, a dew shield and that's going to help with stray light as well having that secondary setback so far. Focuser wise it's got a dual speed linear Crayford focuser and I think the linear bit is the linear rail on the bottom there. It extends that far and when it goes all the way in let's see how far it protrudes inside the optical tube. So that's how far the focuser draw tube goes in to the light path, if you can see that. Doesn't really, it doesn't, that's good. Doesn't that have a dovetail on it? Oh yeah, it's not got no rings on it yet. <laughs> I didn't even notice. So yeah, you've got a red anodized 44mm Vixen dovetail plate. And then we've got red rings to match the anodized bar. This one's for the finder scope holder, finder scope stalk. And finally that will be the finder scope, which is an 8x50. If this section unscrews as well, it means you can use it as a finder guider you can use an adapter to attach your guide camera yep there we go so you can unscrew that section at the back and we'll be able to use a finder guider adapter and your camera and use that as a guide scope so on the focuser we've got a brass compression ring on the 2 to 1.25 inch adapter and a brass compression ring on the 2 inch draw tube 
but does that unscrew? Can you actually directly connect a camera to a thread on it? Or I don't think that unscrews. No, I don't think it does. You'd have to use a push fit connection with this focuser. The Vixen dovetail that comes with the telescope is 22 centimeters long, which is eight and five eighth inches. And I was, uh, I was initially wondering how to connect the rings to the, the dovetail, but it appears it comes with some screws and an Allen key in a little bag. It's not an ideal recording studio, the kitchen floor, but it's the largest well illuminated space I've got to do these kind of videos, just in case you're wondering why I film on the kitchen floor. I'll just measure the circumference so it will give you some idea of what size dew shield you'd need. So I'll, I'll do it in centimetres to begin with. So it's 58 centimetres round, which is just shy of 23 inches, 22 and three quarter inches all the way round and a diameter of seven and a quarter inches. And that's, what's that? 80, 180, 180, about 185. Something like that, 185 millimeters in diameter. So on the back of the mirror, we've got six screws and three of those are gonna be collimation screws and three of them are gonna be locking screws for those collimation screws. My rings are in the way of the finder shoe, so I just need to move the, the rings down before I can put the uh, finder shoe on. I'm kind of looking forward to the challenge. I think I'm ready to be challenged by a fast F4 imaging Newtonian now. So bring it on. The rewards are gonna be worth it, I feel, because it's gonna give me a lot of light for the given focal length for 600 millimeters. 600 millimeters at F4. Sounds very tempting indeed. A small step up in the focal length from the Stella Myra EDT and a step up in speed as well. But also a step up in complexity, the 90 EDT refractor. More expensive, completely plug and play, just super easy. This is more affordable at £389. Considerably more affordable, more than £1,000 more affordable but it is going to take some, I know it's going to take a little bit of tweak and fettling to get it singing, but we'll, we'll do that. And if I'm successful, that means it's good because it would, been, it would be the first F4 imaging Newtonian I'd be successful with if I am successful with it. So my reference point is that I failed miserably with two previous F4 Newtonians and didn't get on with them at all. Here's a close-up of the photovisual coma corrector. It comes with a M48 to M42 T2 adapter, so you can use it with both M48 and M42 T rings, or imaging trains, extenders, whatever. Let's have a look at it. There we go. Compression rings again. Two thumb screws, well machined. And it's uh, modular, so I'm guessing this bit unscrews to reveal the thread. So that must be the that must be the visual adapter. And this is the actual coma corrector, and you pop the uh, M48 to M42 adapter on there. And that must go into the focuser, like a normal coma corrector. Everything feels smooth as butter though, the threads are lovely. Very nicely machined. If I do say so myself as an ex-machinist a long, long time ago.
Okay, so I've had a visual session with the Stella Lyra F4 and uh, it was quite well collimated actually, not perfect. It was certainly usable, I could focus on stars using an eyepiece. And I had a quick look at the moon. I'm not doing any imaging with that moon about and it's quite late as well, so I'm not gonna get started with that. I've done enough for an evening, I think, just to check it out. Uh, but so far, promising and hopefully next time we get out with this uh, scope, we'll be able to do a bit of imaging with it and see what we can come up with, give the coma correction a go. But that'll do for now. Thanks for everyone for watching. Big special thank you to my channel members, Dan the Man of Four Grapples. And until next time, tell those clouds to sod off.